stupid. Um, as the screen says, I'm Kelly Franklin, and here we're here to talk about which social media platforms actually matter for your business. So traditionally, we think of social media, I think of social media as like the big three platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But I'm gonna show you that it's a lot more than Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. There are a lot of platforms that we use every day that is technically social media um, that you may not be using in that capacity. And we're going to explore the concept of social media and I'm going to work to change your perception of it. So this is a little bit about me. Um, I do have 10 years of marketing and social media experience. I've worked across many different industries. I'm actually most recently back in the music business. And these are some of the territories that I've worked in and the territories that I've been responsible for. And as you can see, I've kind of been all over the board. I've worked with everything from startups to SMEs to multinational corporations. So I've kind of seen it all. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna redefine social media. So, social. So the uh, Oxford English Dictionary definition of social is relating to spending other time with people. It's usually for pleasure, sometimes it's fun at work, sometimes it's not. There's also another definition of social where it is your rank in society, which is very important for social media. And then there is media. So media is technically anything that is mass consumption, like anything at all. Traditionally, it's radio, television, newspapers, those kinds of things. And then there's marketing. I'm not going to define marketing for you guys. I really hope you know what that means. Um, but I do want to talk about social media marketing and what's ch what social media has changed about media and marketing is that it's a two-way conversation. It's no longer a one-way conversation where you're just reading the newspaper. You can now tweet the newspaper back or you can leave a comment and tell them how you feel. So what I've done is I've identified some characteristics that most or all social media platforms have in common. So the first is individual user accounts. Me, you, your grandma, maybe even your dog, we can create a social media profile. And this is where we put our picture, maybe a little bio, maybe a link to our company or our website, and we're saying like, look, I'm here, I'm on the internet. Um, and then there's a personalized feed. So again, you are the editor of your own newspaper. You get to select what stories you see, um, what, who you follow on Twitter, what you're looking at on Facebook. It's very customized and it's very personalized. Um, and then there's the ability to broadcast or post publicly. You get to put your opinion, your thoughts, your feelings, your ideas, you get to post them out on the internet. You don't need a company, you don't need a bunch of money, you can just do it for free. Um, and then there's the hyperlinking ability. So you can link off of that social media site. You're not trapped in this one website. Twitter has basically turned into an RSS feed where it's linking out to all other sites. Um, and then there's the ability to interact with the media. So depending on the platform, they might call it a like, a share, a comment, a mention, a retweet, but you're able to interact with that media that is posted. And then there's the private messaging feature. You're able to slide into someone's DMs. That's a very important thing on social media. So these are the characteristics that I've identified. And knowing this, we're gonna take this um, to the next step. So these are the top 10 social media sites around the world. On the left is website visits and on the right is active users. So the name of my, um, or on the thing, it was like, do we really need a Facebook page? And yes, we do really need a Facebook page because it's the number one social media website in the world. I put the German flag next to the top eight social media websites in Germany. YouTube is actually number one. Um, when you're looking at this, so the left is website visits. So that's obviously people that are going to the website that are not logged in. And the one on the right is active users. So those are people that are actually signed in and each website identifies active users differently. Like, have they been active in the last 10 days, 20 minutes? It's different. Um, one thing that's interesting about this information is that Medium is now on here. And Medium is a blogging platform, but because you can follow somebody, you can make a profile, you can comment, it's technically social media. And then also, I was very surprised to see that Tumblr 
is still on here. I personally haven't used Tumblr since about like 2013, but apparently the rest of the world is. Um, I do want to make a note that for our context, I did remove Russian and Chinese sites because it would skew the data too much. Now, a very interesting fact about this um, is that there are messenger platforms on this. So there's Facebook Messenger, there's WhatsApp, and there's Skype, and those are considered social media. So because you can make a profile, because you can interact, and because you can also broadcast publicly. And so we're going to explore, having this information, explore new social media ideas. Uh, so the first one is messaging. So most of us probably have WhatsApp, Telegram, and Messenger. Does anybody not have any of these at all? OK, so you know basically how they function. So a very cool feature of these is that you can do broadcast. It's called broadcast on WhatsApp and on um, Telegram. It's called channels. That's an example of a Telegram channel. So this is basically a one-way message. You can think of it as the front page of a newspaper. You are talking at your audience. You're not interacting with them. But um, you can use it also kind of for PR a little bit. And there's also groups. So groups really provide the opportunity where you can interact your, with your customers on a very private level. You can also do a lot of data capturing within groups. Let's say you have some VIP customers that you want to get some information out of. It's really easy to do market research um, using groups as well. It's also, you can get people to talk about the product um, in a very intimate space because you're in WhatsApp or you're in Telegram and you're in Messenger. And as the company, you can observe that. And it's very raw, unfiltered feedback. And then there's also bots. So that's actually an example of a bot. So there's a company here in Berlin called Moberries, and they're an HR tech company. So you go to Moberries, you uh, put your profile up there, you say, I've been working in marketing for five years and I'm interested in these things. And they use AI to actually match you to jobs. And so they have a bot and the bot is called Mo. And Mo will send you a Facebook message and say, hey Kelly, I found 10 jobs in Berlin. And you can literally say yes, no, or more information. Uh, the really cool thing about Facebook bots is that it doesn't cost you any extra money and you just have to go to the developer page on Facebook and they give you some code and they help you build it out. So as I was saying, research is something that you can easily do with these messenger groups. Another thing that Lition did, um, which is what is flashing through, so they have more Telegram users than they do have traditional social media users. And they did something called an ICO, which is an initial coin offering. They funded their startup using their own cryptocurrency that they created. And they raised, I think it was 18.4 million, sorry, uh, 1.5 million USD in 18 minutes and 14 seconds because of their Telegram group. Um, and then also, as I was saying, you can do PR. So instead of sending it to newspapers, bloggers, you can activate your community and have them spread messages for you. And then again, you can do CRMs for VIPs or any type of like research that you want to do. Let's say you ha you've identified your heavy, happy users or you have people that spend over a certain threshold of money and you want to give them white glove treatment. That's something that you can do with these messaging groups. So Google, is there anyone in here that doesn't use Google to find information? OK, cool. Um, so this is Google My Business. So you may or may not notice this when you Google things. This is a company. This is the company name. There's the reviews. There's the opening hours and the time. But then there's this, this thing. If you Google Google My Business, Google will give you the opportunity to claim your Google business page. And you can control this. And this is essentially like a Facebook wall. But this is a Facebook wall that the entire world can see. And it also has the ability to hyperlink out, so you can put CTAs up there. So you can build special landing page for Google Business campaigns. And the really cool thing about Google My Business is that you're gonna get more impressions out of this than you can with all of your other social media platforms combined, and it's free. And then the other feature of Google My Business, let's say that you have um, maybe like a widget shop or a cupcake shop or a restaurant, um, an actual physical location. People can message you and it, this doesn't go to your phone. It doesn't share your phone number or anything. You can do it in the back end. But again, you're going in the, you're, 
potential customer's message feed so they think of you more as a friend and not necessarily as a business. You can say like, hey Kelly, I wanna reserve a table tonight for two people and they're like, okay, yeah, cool, you can do it. Um, and you can kind of use that in lieu of maybe a customer service call center or having your own customer service uh, in-house. So communities. Um, communities are a really cool thing online that are have been there for a while and that have been constantly evolving. So one of the first communities that I was ever a part of was actually something called Laundromatic back in 1998. And it was sort of Etsy eBay Craigslist. So it was forums where we talked about, I love the Backstreet Boys in 1998. So we talked about Backstreet Boys, but then I also bought these really cool red Chinese New Year envelopes that I still have to this day because China was this far off place, but I got it and I got it on the internet. Um, Excuse me. So communities allow you to really emotionally connect with people and have an insular fans. So one of the first communities that I want to talk about is closed Facebook groups. Um, Facebook has their foot on the neck of organic reach, and it's really actually hard to get reach. Facebook is basically pay to play right now. However, if you create a closed Facebook group, they're a little bit more lax on the reach. You can also make um, a little application for people to get in. And as you know, like scarcity breeds demand. Uh, the technical term for that is FOMO. And if people feel like they can't get inside your Facebook group, they'll, they'll want to get in it even more. Um, and then I wanted to give you the example as Reddit as an on-domain community. Um, other on-domain communities would be like the SoundCloud forum, Apple forum, um, Revolut and Monzo also have community forums. And these are basically message boards that live on your domain that people kind of help each other and then you have moderators to do it as well. You can also, um, within the communities, find software evangelists or product evangelists, and they can you can really amplify their voice if you use them correctly. And then Twitch. Um, you could also do YouTube Live. I just put Twitch as an example, but live video streaming. So, of course, there is Facebook Live, and Facebook was really promoting that. However, in my work experience, I've noticed that people have started to hate Facebook, and they don't necessarily have a Facebook page. They don't want to log into their Facebook account. But with something like Twitch and Reddit, or sorry, Twitch and YouTube Live, you could do live product demos, or someone can talk to C-level at your company, or maybe you sell mountain bikes and you get a professional mountain biker. Um, those kind of like exclusive content, things like that. And then there's Meetup. This is technically a Meetup, sort of. It's where people that have a common interest online get together offline and they talk about it and they share tips and tricks. And then reviews. So I think reviews often get overlooked and they're a little bit neglected, um, but they can be really important, especially for new companies when you're trying to grow your brand trust or to show your brand trust. It's also another opportunity for you to pay, be able to do research very quickly and very cheaply because it's free, it's on the internet, it's unfiltered data, you're getting people that really love your product or really hate your product or are passionate about your product and wanna help you improve it. So obviously if you have an app, you're gonna be on one of these two app stores. Um, there is Trustpilot, so if you don't know Trustpilot, it's a review site that's really big here in Europe and people go to it usually for services or for companies and they're like, oh, this service is really great or oh, I don't really like this service and it's just, you know, in the culture that we live in today, a lot of people do research before they make a purchase, so this helps push them down the funnel. And then there's Google reviews. Obviously, if someone Googles you, they're gonna see their reviews. You can't really turn that off once it gets turned on and it's very important that you stay on top of that. Um, I put Amazon up there just in this example. Any e-retailer, if you're selling a physical product on, you should look at those reviews and try to answer them. And then I put these stars just to, as to serve as any reviews that are anywhere on the internet. Obviously you can't control them and you can't monitor them, monitor them all, but you should identify the ones where you're getting the most traffic on that website and try to keep on top of them. And also reviews give you the opportunity um, to really wow your customers. So the rule that I usually have is if it's three stars or less, we answer those reviews because those people are probably really, really angry, if, especially if it's like one or two stars. And on the app stores, I know on Apple for sure, I don't remember on Google, but the person can change the number of stars. And if you have an application, that's obviously gonna get you higher up in the rankings and help your downloads. And it gives you the opportunity also to turn your brand attractors into brand champions. 
podcast is there anyone in here that doesn't know what a podcast is we won't judge you okay cool so these are the um countries around the world the top seven germany's not on here but i still think podcasts are super important um where there's a podcast penetration of adults over the age of 18 and i personally listen to three to four hours of podcasts a day um, because it's a passive activity it's not an active activity i can listen to podcasts while i'm like designing photos or riding my bike or cleaning or cooking or something like that i don't have to like read a book or watch a video so it's a really good way for people to intake information without without necessarily having to be super active about it um, the other thing is, is you can kind of think of it as replacing a white paper. Maybe you're in an industry where you produce 40 page white papers that takes a lot of time and a lot of money and you can't, I mean, you can sort of measure the ROI, um, but podcast is just a little bit quicker. Some really good things about podcasts is that the um, listening is pretty evenly split between male and female and that 98% of listeners that listen to podcasts use social media. And so most of those listeners also follow the companies and brands um, that, of podcasts on social media. And uh, before us humans, we invented written language and pictures. What did we do? We told stories. So it gives you the opportunity to tap into that old innate human instinct and drive of, of telling stories and really developing a brand narrative and connecting with your customers um, through something simple. It's also a little bit cheaper than maybe making a video. Video cameras are expensive. Uh, a lot of times, like maybe if you're at a startup, your employees don't really want to be interviewed on camera. If you're trying to do Vox Pops on the street, you have this huge camera in people's faces, they don't want to do it. But you can get a microphone relatively cheap for about 100 bucks. Find a quiet room, like put up a mattress or some styrofoam or just find a very quiet room and you can produce a podcast pretty easily, pretty cheaply. You can get it up on the internet super fast as well. And then the audit. Um, so I put this slide in here because many of you may not be social media managers uh, or community managers. You may just work in the marketing department and you're like, social media is very tedious and you can be very pedantic about it. Um, but this will help you use the information that I've given you um, and kind of overview it of how you're using it in your daily work. So the first thing is list all of the profiles you have. And I don't mean like, oh, we have a Facebook and a Twitter. If you have 20 Twitter profiles, 10 Facebook profiles, three Reddit accounts, four YouTube pages, like put it all on one page so that you can like see it. And then the next one is to list your goals and ask yourself like, why are we on these platforms? Are you on these platforms because the intern last year was like, oh yeah, Twitter's really cool. We need to get Twitter account or we really need this TikTok account. Like everybody's doing it, um, but it's not really giving you any ROI. And then you need to find out what social media networks are big in your markets. I listed the top eight in Germany and the ones in the world. Um, you know, perhaps just because your company is located in Germany doesn't mean your only market is Germany. You need to find out what's big in Italy. So, um, in Sweden, Pinterest is huge, but maybe not so much in Italy. You need to figure that out, especially if you are thinking about doing global marketing. And then you want to look at co your competitors. What platforms are they on? Are your top five competitors, do they all have an Instagram account? You probably should get an Instagram account because your customers are going to expect you to be on Instagram. And then what platforms bring you the most engagement? And I don't mean like a super complicated engagement rate math problem. Like if you want to compare apples to apples, just look at the number of actual engagements. Are you getting... 10,000 engagements on Twitter, but only 5,000 on Facebook. Like, just don't do an engagement rate. Look at the number of, like, actual engagements. Um, and then you want to ask yourself, this is the very important question, is can you feed the content monster? Social media requires lots of media. It needs GIFs, photos, um, videos, text content. It and if you have 20 Facebook profiles in five different languages, do you have the ability to translate all of the posts that you're doing into those five languages? Um, if you don't, that's okay. Do you have the ability to hire an agency? If you have the money for an agency, is there someone in your company that can brief the agency? Does that agency understand your brand? Do they really like get you or are they just taking your money? If you can't hire an agency, do you have the ability to hire a freelancer? And again, is there someone at your company that can brief this freelancer? If not, maybe you don't need 
20 social media profiles and you should think about five that you can do really well versus 20 that you can do so-so. Um, and then you wanna get your customer data. This is also something that's super important is you want to look at your customer data and compare that to your social media fans. So let's say you have, you see that you have a surge of customers in Albania, but your product doesn't ship to Albania. So are those fake social media fans or is that an opportunity for you to start shipping or making your product available in Albania? And then you wanna ask yourself, are we reaching our total addressable market? Are there some things that we didn't think about? Are you missing out on SEO opportunities because you're not doing affiliate marketing? Um, so if you haven't taken any other pictures, this is a very important slide that you can take pictures of once I fill in all of the information. So B2B, if you are a B2B company, these are the social media platforms that would work best for you. If you are a B2C company, these are the platforms that would work best for you. Now, obviously, if you're B2C, you have a little bit more options, um, but try it out. And then there's three things that I'm gonna leave you with. So keep. So keep focusing on platforms where there's an overlap between your fans, your customers, and your target audience, because this is like, the actual sweet spot because you have your fans, the people that like you, that have opted in to listen to you on social media. You have your customers, you have the people that are actually buying your product. And then you have your target audience and these are the people that you want to sell the product to. And if you like hit all three of that, that's, that's the money shot. And then stop, stop having a presence everywhere. If you have a Twitter and it only has 5,000 followers and you're not getting that much engagement, close the Twitter account. Those people will find you somewhere else. I guarantee you they'll find you on your WhatsApp group or uh, maybe on your Tumblr page, wherever else. And then try, try something new. I've given you a myriad of options and I'm sure there's one that you haven't done yet. So just, I'm gonna challenge you to try it out. And then I wanna leave you with this, something to remember. These platforms are their own living, breathing ecosystems. They're constantly changing and evolving, but always bringing with them DNA from their predecessors. It's imperative that you understand your business, these platforms, and how they can best live symbiotically. Thanks. Hi, how are you? My name is George, and my question is, how do you deal, especially with Instagram and Twitter, how do you deal with multi-language content profiles? Like multi-language, if you go into a, do you deal with multiple profiles for each language, put it all in one, how do you deal with that? Um, so it depends on what you want to do, right? So Twitter is usually customer service. So you want to talk to those people in their native language. So if your product is offered in multiple languages, you want to alter, offer customer service in multiple languages, then I would have multiple Twitter accounts. Instagram is an art gallery, it's pictures. We all speak pictures. So you don't necessarily need five Instagram accounts because if your product is like pretty much the same, but it's just changed by language, then like what are you gonna have like five pictures of just like me going like this like that's that's a waste of your resources so for instagram like i would it also has the auto translation you can just click see translation i would keep instagram as simple as possible like in terms of captions and if you're a global company then obviously do it in english if you're a german company then just do it in german like just do it in your de your default native language but also have a a like um a photographer or art director or creative director or someone that has an eye and that understands like photography language and that like what what certain body posture is is saying in the picture what this color means like i mean in my experience i'm always very detail oriented and i'm looking at the entire picture and making sure there isn't something weird in the background um, hello i'm Hi. rakshit and uh I had a question because I was part of this company which in which I did the social media marketing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where the divide comes between the B2B profile and the B2C profile. Mm -hmm. So like if you're publishing some sort of content, should it be more oriented towards the customers or towards the clients you want to engage with? Yeah. Or should we have like separate profiles for that? Is So your company does B2B and B2C? Yeah. Well, so those are two different target audiences, sure. right? Yeah. So you're saying like, oh, if we have a Twitter account, do I post white papers or do I post something funny? Yeah, exactly. Well, 
that's a very good question. So it just depends. It depends on like how much information that you like have about your customer and like how you want to present yourself on the internet, right? So B2B stuff is like probably going to skew more towards LinkedIn. However, you could have two separate Twitter profiles. Like that isn't super crazy because let's say I'm a B2C customer and you keep posting white papers, eventually I'm going to unfollow you. So you'd have to have a handle that's like uh, Kelly's B2B and then Kelly's B2C. Like just kind of differentiate your product. Um, on LinkedIn, I would stick to B2B. On Facebook, it's I would probably still stick to B2C. What is the actual B2C product? Can you talk into the microphone? I can't hear you. Sorry. Hello. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's more about healthcare services. Okay. So we want to still engage community health workers into our system. Yeah. But at the same time, we need to get clients who will be willing to like even help us financially as well as engage their systems into our. Um, it's an obvious thing. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other thing about that too is is like if you have a very nice B to C marketing. Facebook page, then you can show it to your B2B people and say, I mean, this isn't necessarily like your target audiences, but like, look how nice we talk to the B2C people. Right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Thank you so much for oh, the talk. You're welcome. <laughs> Good luck on the